All right, thank you for attending our talk today. I'm Andy Newman and I'm here with Trevor Staples and we are physical therapy students at the University of Utah. We knew our student run pro bono clinics had to transition to telehealth and we knew the evidence supported treatment of telehealth for musculoskeletal and neurologic conditions and physical therapy. But when trying to find studies to see how we could do this in our student run pro bono therapy clinics, we found few studies. So today we'd like to talk to you about how we implemented telehealth and used a framework to do so in our student run pro bono clinics. When looking at what our clinic looks like, um, most of the patients or all of the patients have to be um, at or below 150% of the poverty line. Um, in 2020, the population looked a little bit like this. 80% were Spanish speaking and 66% of the patients were female. Um, and we, one thing that's unique about our clinic is that our university uh, partners with a community partner, which helps us set up reception staff, and a space, a physical space for the clinic. Um, so a lot of this had to be coordinated through them. And that was one of the things we wanna talk through today. So when looking at our methods, we used the consolidated framework for implementation research. And to draw your attention to the graphic in the middle, starting with the left on the pro process and moving to the right, First, we made a plan where we process mapped and we used training slash decision aids. And then we engaged our leaders at our school and then our community partner that Trevor mentioned previously. Then we executed our telehealth implementation and we asked for feedback from our students, our patients, and our attending physical therapists. And then to evaluate our success, we used our patient reported outcome scores and we compared our cancellation rates of telehealth cancellation rates versus in-person cancellation rates. <clears throat> then looking a little bit at um, our results, um, looking at the consolidated framework for implementation research, um, one of the major barriers we identified was complexity. Um, and identif or setting up a telehealth process is somewhat complex. We had to figure out how to administer our patient reported outcomes, set up a telehealth platform, and ultimately landed on Zoom, and then figure out what the best practices were for these platforms. Um, once we did this, we were able to develop some solutions such as decision aids, mapping our process for students, and identifying a really clear um, flow for the telehealth visit, and then providing yeah, this outline to students so that they had a clear structure. Um, from an outer setting perspective, um, we were able to identify patient needs and resources. One of the major needs was that patients didn't have access to the internet um, in many cases. Um, and one solution we developed was inviting patients to actually physically go into the clinic um, on their own with only one other person present um, so they could physically distance and still get treated um, over telehealth. Um, and this was met with some limited success. From an inner setting perspective, um, one of the barriers we identified was coordinating and scheduling with our community partner. Um, and one way we kind of minimized the confusion or any complications that could happen here is having students schedule follow-up and notify the reception staff um, that the, what when these visits were scheduled. And then finally, um, from a characteristic of our individuals, um, students really and attendings were really quite new to this telehealth process. So we, we tried to develop some materials so that they could be really successful, including linking evidence and pretreatment emails, um, creating some telehealth video examples and providing them with a very structured um, outline of what a visit should look like. So as far as our results of success, our telehealth cancellation rate was 10% compared to 12% of in-person. And then uh, the outcome scores we collect in our clinic is the promised physical function. And for telehealth, our average score was 46.3 compared to 41 for in-person visits. And as a reminder for the promised physical function, a higher score means higher function. So, and the MCID is four for this outcome measure. So we took this to mean that we were successful in our implementation and that we at least maintain um, patient's physical function. So here are our emails. If you have any questions, we'd love to hear from you. And once again, thank you for being with us today.